we're going to be a million dollar business. So let's, you know, we were 650. We're yeah. going to be a million dollar business. So let's ramp up like a million dollar business. For three years, I had ramped up to be the million dollar business that wasn't there. Right. And in those years, our profitability like dropped. Yeah, tanked. Yeah, tanked. Yeah, yeah, tanked. He's got all these bodies. Yeah. yeah. Whereas before that, when we were flying off the handle, like the most money we ever made was when we were $640,000 company. Right? Most, there were like profit. Take profit. Home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There yeah. were like four or five of us in the business. We were, yeah. we were working like crazy. Yeah. And I went, I'm ready to be the big company. I'm going to become, I'm going to hire the way the big companies do. Yeah. And that hurt us. That hurt us until like two years ago yeah. when we made big changes again and we started going like, forget this. We need to be flying off the handle. Welcome back, Believe Nation. We are doing a 10 part series on how to build a million dollar plus company in the marketing agency business world. World. This Mark is Mark Dane. Drager. This is episode nine. If you haven't been following along, go back and watch them. They've been gold. Mark runs Fanta. He's been, how long, when did you hit, like how long ago have you been million plus? Six years, maybe? Six years ago, Five he hit years? million plus. Yeah. Awesome. And, and today, we're going to talk about how to scale. I think so it was year seven. I think year six or seven, we've crossed a million dollars. Year six. Yeah. How to scale. How to go from like just being a solo entrepreneur to now building a team and building up the company. Because as we covered in the previous, previous video, you can't build a million dollar company all on your own. Mm -hmm. And so, you've got 12 full-time people. You've got tons of freelancers work for you. What's your advice on how to go from being that solo entrepreneur to scaling your company? Yeah, so the, the biggest thing that you have to do is, is obviously know what you like and don't like and know your strengths and weaknesses, Yeah. right? You always want to, so a lot of us, when we're starting, we feel, at least I felt, like I had to be the smartest person in the room. Okay. I had to feel like this is my company, so yeah. obviously I know everything. And I, I guess lucky for me, there are so many parts of the business that I know that I'm not good at when I find someone who is much better than me at it, I'm like, thank goodness you're here. Like, I, I cannot wait to bring in people uh, who are better than me okay. at what they do. And, and that's that's the kind of multiplying effect that in a creative agency that um, I didn't think about, and I don't know many people, if many people do, mm -hmm. is that when I'm one person, I'm not only limited by my skill set and my time, but I'm also what selling and doing account managing and trying to do the work or trying to manage people and all these things. And when I bring in two people, it doesn't only double, I mean, it doesn't purely double the amount of productivity you can okay. have because you still have to manage that person, yeah. but it doesn't only double that there are now two people. It actually raises what the agency is capable of because the person I'm hiring, if I hire you, mm -hmm. you're. Let's, let's be frank, like Evan is really good at, at coaching people and speaking to people. Suddenly I hire you, mm -hmm. Fanta has a new coaching division of the business. Right. We're now the experts at coaching because I can leverage your credibility, I can leverage your background, I can leverage all these things. Right. And when I go from two people to three people, Michael on my team, 20 years of experience with analytics, with product management. I'm not a product manager, Yeah. but he has been a product manager at really big companies. And so when we work with a client, and he's talking about SKUs and warehouses and all this stuff. Like, I have no experience. Suddenly, Fanta has the experience. Right. And so, I almost, I, I wasn't aware of the magic that comes from each person that you can add, who can be better than you, who can elevate the company, who you can leverage their experience. Now, it can go the other way. Right? You can mishire. I've mishired lots of people. You can yeah. mishire, and it can be kind of a downer. But the way that I look at people and scaling and the way that I suggest most people do is not only look at the person who can do what you want them to do, that's an opportunity to grow your story, to grow your brand, to grow your capabilities, and you can sell, you can sell the benefits of having that person. Who should be the first person somebody hire? How do you figure out who my first hire yeah. should be? It's gonna be your opposite. So okay. if I'm really great at sales, mm -hmm. but I'm terrible at operations and delivery and production, I need a production person. If I'm really great at design, but I, I'm terrible at customer service, I need a customer service and account manager. If, um, you know, really, within our industry like you're either really good at the craft mm -hmm. and then you need the business or the salesperson or you're yeah. really I I was much better and I am I think much better at the, the sales and account management side really our business took off when I was able to afford you know a, a better producer a better director a better camera people better mm -hmm. editors better photographers uh, better people at wireframing, better people at strategy than me. Like, like we have been able, the reason we have a core team of 12 and then lots of freelancers is because in, I mean, I'd love to have like 18 people here. Mm -hmm. right? Like I want, I want a, I, I want a business manager. 
because I struggle to keep on top of all of the contracts and all of the legal and all of the accounting. I'm just not good at it. I don't right. like it. So we have big projects that never have a contract signed. And people are like, where's the contract? I'm like, oh, I never signed it like eight months ago. And like, that's not great. We shouldn't yeah. be doing that. So, so you look at all the parts of the business, but you start with just like the polar opposite, in my opinion, of you. Okay. If I'm really great at the craft, I want someone better at the business. If I'm really good at the business, I want someone better at the craft so that way you elevate. Okay, so that's from one to two. Now when you go to three or four or five, I, I recommend you look at the areas of the business that are holding you back. Meaning? So if you can't get things produced fast enough, hmm. so in, in a creative agency, the speed in which you produce mm -hmm. actually affects your margins more than anything else. Okay. Right? And so, so if you have staff on salary, and you plan for them to spend you know, a week on it, so 40 hours working on it, and they spend 60, your margins are gone. If it's a freelance project though, you might say, well, it doesn't matter how many weeks it takes because I'm only, it's a fixed price. But it takes a certain amount of time to sell something, a certain amount of time to bring it into production, a certain amount of time to work on it. And, and by the time you get to the part where you're delivering that stretched out project. Mm -hmm. You now have bodies working on something that was sold and should have been done three months ago mm -hmm. and you're burning through your overhead and now suddenly you get to the next part of it and you're selling your next project. You can't work on that project because right. you're busy trying to deliver the thing from three months ago. Right. So, so when I mean the parts that are broken or, or holding you back, is speed of delivery holding you back? Uh, are you making mistakes with communications and then maybe you need like a project manager? Hmm. Uh, or maybe sales, like your team is just sitting around doing nothing. Maybe. You got to get more business. Maybe. I'm, That's not your I'm problem. No, I'm very hesitant to say that. Okay. Because, because interesting. Well, because when we did the last video series, how to grow uh -huh. a million dollar business, I, I, I had a salesperson at the time. And yeah. I talked about how I, how three years in, I, I put the whole business on the line to hire a salesperson. Okay. And, and I hired uh, someone who helped me a lot and they were with me for seven years. Yeah. Um, they, like, I don't think Fanta could have gotten where it was without that person. I, okay. I really don't. Like, okay. I, I learned a lot. We grew up together. So, we, so why are you hesitant to say sales is a problem for companies? Because, and, and I've, I've learned this since I mentioned that, yeah. is people think I need a salesperson. Okay. Right? But a salesperson, most salespeople still require lead generation. Sure. To hand it them. They still require uh, great account management after the fact. Sure. They, like they will they, they still don't know your business as well as you so you still need to feed them information so they end up so at a certain point they will help you close some sales right but then it'll start to shift to the point where you're actually hiring other resources just to feed that salesperson yep. just so they can do their job yep. and it becomes an actual negative on the company well whether it's sales or marketing like if you you're saying what's the problem in the business it may be that you're, you're just, you have too much work and you have to hire people to scale up yeah. or you've got too many people and you don't have enough projects. So whether it's a salesperson or yeah. a PPC campaign or... Yeah, and most agencies don't, so it's a bit chicken and egg. Right? Yeah. Like I need the staff yeah. to make the sales, but I need the sales to pay for the staff. Right. And so we always grew our business based off of kind of, um, I don't even think bootstrapping is the right word. Okay. It's more like constantly flying apart at the seams, <laughs> right? And so when I hired, so like if I go through my order, like when I hired uh, Daniel, who was my first salesperson, it, like I had, it was just me and him. Yeah. When we hired our first editor, it was because Your literally- first hire was a salesperson? No, my first hire that was real. So I hired, yeah. a, I hired a PA, uh, a production assistant to assist me in this and that. Part-time. Uh, full time, full but time. she was only with me nine months, and then the recession hit in two thousand nine. And okay. you know, we were only a hundred and eighty thousand dollar company at the okay. time. It but was the first employee that helped you grow your company was a salesperson, sales and you were doing all of the video everything filming else. operations, else. everything, everything else. But right. I was I was responsible even for trying to generate. Would you do leads. it again? Uh, would I do it again if I started the company again? No, yeah. I'm much better at sales now. So I would do. You myself. would do the sales, and you would hire the team to do the rest. Got it. But, first hire. But that's confidence and that's experience. No, of course. And, no, yeah. no, I'm just curious. No, but my first, my first real hire, I, I, I um, the company had zero money. Yeah. All right, we, it was 2000 and, just finished 2008. We ate through all of our cash that we had on reserve. There was a three month period where we had zero sales. Yeah. And I was going to close the company down. And then I called my mom and I said, I, I, you know, I started in 2006. So I was like, it's just too hard. Mm. You know, like why have I given three years of my life mm. to do something that has no money in the bank? Uh, I didn't earn any income during that time. Like I gave three years of my life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And and it was February, and um, I hired, I found a salesperson, 
through, uh, recruiter. through a recruiter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I hired a recruiter, paid six grand for a recruiter, found a salesperson. Um, Andrew, this amazing guy that we're still friends with, that uh, I really love to have on board, and three weeks in he quit because he had been offered his dream job. Right. And he didn't know it was going to happen, and he would never have accepted my job if he right. realized. And so I'm left with like, well, I just spent, I, I paid him three weeks' salary. It really upset right. me. I got yeah. nothing for it, and, yeah. and, I, and I had no money. Yeah. So I went out and borrowed money. I borrowed 40 or 50 grand. Man. And uh, I went back to the recruiter. I said, find me the next person. And then that was when I didn't pay myself for six months. I cut checks and I paid that person. And, you know, like Daniel sacrificed a lot too. So, so that's the yeah, thing. Yeah. Like he came in not as a salesperson. He came in as a, as, with a partner mindset. Right. And what I don't, I didn't realize then, but most of my staff, most yeah. of the people who work for me, mm -hmm. you know, you said something about me being a boss earlier. And I'm like, I'm not really a boss. Mm -hmm. I'm just the guy who's kind of in charge. Um, <laughs> maybe it's the same <laughs> thing. Everybody has to listen to. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but I actually hire people. I, I think I hire more people who treat me like a business partner okay. and I treat them like a business partner. Okay. So, I mean, they're not fully aware of everything on the financial side. Right. Um, you know, net profit margins and, and things like that. But when yeah. it comes to like, guys, how do we do this as a business? Yeah, yeah right? they're on board. Like, how do we, how do we, how do we, how do we figure this out? How do we change this? What's going to yeah. happen? Guys, this department is getting completely overrun, all yeah. hands on deck. Like, we're all, we're all business partners. We're all like... But, but they also get the rewards from it. We do profit sharing models. Yep. So um, uh, if you know staff have come to me in the past who and have been like, I'm facing this life situation. I don't know how I'm gonna get by this month financially. Right. And so, Try to help. Like, well, we just we cut them a check and hand them a bonus. Mm. Right? Like I can't have my team at work not yeah, thinking yeah, about yeah. work. Yeah, yeah, I want yeah, them yeah. thinking, of, like I wanna, I wanna own them, right? Like, <laughs> I wanna like, own them, but I'm not a boss. <laughs> No, no, <laughs> but I mean, partner. I want every aspect of their life outside no, no, I get of I them you, being you. amazing people to yeah, be yeah, dedicated yeah. to our cause. Yeah, yeah. And so I can't have someone at work barely getting by. So yeah. like, it's the give and take. Yeah. It's the, it's the like, this isn't, you know. Yeah. And First hire, freelancer or full time? Yeah, I had a bunch of freelancers. A bunch but of freelancers. What should the advice be? First hire, because, I mean, I agree, but because. Yeah, it's just the variable cost model. So you have to be able to keep your overhead down. Um, now we built our business a bit Unusually, you are eating. Look at this. She's eating, eating a screw. screw. <laughs> She's eating a screw. This is not dog food. Okay, you're gonna stay on my lap. Mark's a builder, so <laughs> this is random not, screws. Not, not, not she actually pulled this out of an electrical outlet. Not just <laughs> not wow. Not just companies, but he likes to build stuff too. Yeah. Anyway. So um, so freelancer. Uh, yeah. So we built our company a bit unusually. Because but what, what should people do? What do you think they should do? Well, but I'm biased. So, so, so I think okay. you should work with freelancers. Yeah. But when we started our company, everyone was working freelancers. Yeah. And freelancers are four, five, six times more, more expensive. per expensive than yeah. full-time. Yeah. So I immediately said, hey, hiring full-time is really expensive. But if I can hire full-time and then keep them really, really busy, right. like my margins are like amazing. Right. right? So we built our business that way. But right? you like year over year over year. Uh, I love the freelancer model at the start because it also teaches you to be a better leader on a low. Yeah. So like the things I don't somebody. like about freelancers yeah. is, um, is one, I think it takes a long time to get into a groove with someone. Train. Yeah. Not only train them, but them train you. Culture. Like they're yeah, better yeah. than you are. Yeah. So they got to teach you. You got to teach them. You got to yeah. work together. You got to sort of develop shorthand. Yeah. Uh, and so I, I would rather invest that in people who are going to keep around. Yeah. Now, we have freelancers who we've worked with for six or seven years, who are still freelance. Yeah. Because every time I look at the end of the year how much I've paid them, it yeah. still doesn't warrant me hiring them full time. Right. Uh, but but we like to we like to hold on to people yeah. who are good and the people who aren't good. You know, we got I love collecting good leave. people. A lot of the people who are in this field are artists and they're great at what they do mm -hmm. and uh, they hire somebody who's not as good as them and they feel like this person can't do what I do. And then they get rid of them, and they feel like, oh, I'm never going to scale. Yeah, it's tough. I'm, you know, I, I suck at managing. I'm just going to go back and do everything myself. And that could work, but you're never going to be a million dollar company doing it. So how do you get through that initial phase of like the first person doesn't work out, and this guy left, and it took three weeks' pay, and I hired somebody, but they're not they're not what I thought they would be, and I hired the wrong person. Like all of the bumps that come at the beginning of hiring, because you've never done it before, so you suck, and you get the wrong people. And they're yeah. not as good as you. So, like, how do you get through all that? So, get used to the fact that every time that you hire someone for a role, the first yeah. person will be wrong. Okay. Like, I, like, I, 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 I've been doing this a long time. Yeah. I feel like I'm pretty good at hiring. Yeah. And yet, the first person I hire for any new role doesn't seem to be the right person. I've been proven maybe once wrong, like, or maybe okay. wrong once. Right. Where someone did come in and they were just great. Right. But. 
And, and so so get so get comfortable with that because you just don't you just don't know what you need from the person. You kind okay. of think you do. You don't know what you're looking for. You don't know what you need. So that's fine. So yeah. So get comfortable with that. Uh, the other thing is give up the things that you're really good at last. Right. Right. So for Hiring me, the opposite. Your first. Yeah. Point. For yeah. me, I have very much struggled in the company to give up copywriting. Hmm. You're and, a good copywriter too. This guy. This man is a. <laughs> I admire his copywriting. Okay. I look at his, he, he could like brain dump awesomeness that takes like just out of nothing. Well, I appreciate it's amazing. that. Yeah. But I, I have a good team as well. But, but I have like, it, it, it has bugged me for years where I go, I'm doing strategy, I'm doing sales, I should be focused on all of this stuff, and yet I'm doing this low value copywriting. Why right. can't we find a copywriter who can write copy and do right. what I want, this and that? And yet it may be low. It's not low value. It's just low perceived value to me and the, right. is my role in the business. Right. And yet, if you have bad copy, everything it about the project apart. falls apart. Yeah, it's gone. Yeah. And so I'm always like, I'm, I'm, I'm still working on video scripts. I'm right. Still doing all this stuff. So anyway, we're all these years into it, and it's one of the very last things that I'm willing to give right. up. I, I think creative direction or art direction is the last thing I'm willing to give up. Right. Um, you will give it up at mm -hmm. some point. Yeah. 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 And so how do you be, deal with that? How, so on. is it just because you found somebody who can actually do it better than you? Or is on par with you. If you feel like you're amazing at it, and you give it to somebody who sucks, yeah. Obviously, so, you're so one tool it, that we do because I always look, I'm like very analytical. Yeah. And I try to explain this to my team. We call it my way, not my way, right or wrong. Okay. So think of a matrix, four things, yeah. right? And there's like there's like my, my way, not my way, right yeah. or wrong. Yeah. Yeah. So if it's wrong, it has to be fixed. Sure. Even if it's wrong in my opinion, in your way, yeah, it has to be fixed. Right. If it's right, everybody's dandy. Yeah. Uh, if it's my way, even better. But if it's not my way, and it's right, but it's right. Still, I have to let it go. Right. Everybody should let it go. Right. Because then that's just me micromanaging. But right is what by the metrics that you're right tracking? is right is the metrics. Right is like what the client has talked about. The conversations right. we've had. It feels right for the product. We're, we're really trying to work to not get bogged down on what it's like just inherently I feel is kind of like not my way right but the client doesn't think it's wrong my team doesn't think it's wrong yeah the designer doesn't think it's wrong and so I just I I've I let it go mm. I, and it's hard and I let it go and then when something goes wrong and the client comes back and is like mm, you know they like oh I don't really like that I'm like oh I knew I should have spoken up mm. but that that doesn't happen. We talked about that in the gut, right? Mm -hmm. Like when it's screaming and everyone says it's okay. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I should have just done it my way. Mm -hmm. But you, and I tell that to my team, like as, as, as I turn something over to producer and that producer become, has to start to turn over to thing, people below them and then they have to turn things over to freelancers, mm -hmm. I'm now five steps removed from decisions that are being made. Right. I, like I have to believe that every step below understands the context of what's happening and the best intentions and this and that. Mm -hmm. And the little things can really mess you up, but you cannot grow a business having every element of everything be perfect. Right. Right. You have to, I mean, you've, you've talked to me about this, right? Oh, like yeah, there's yeah, the yeah. world-class things. Yeah, yeah. What are you going to be world-class oh, yeah. at? Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. I thought about that the other day because I think my answer to you was everything. Right. I think my answer was like, I'm going to be world-class at, at yeah. account management and design and yeah. analytics yeah. and development and this and this yeah. and this. You're like, no. <laughs> So, okay. so one last thing I, I will say, because I mentioned about how like things are flying off the handle all the time. We only hire someone when that um, hire opposite to hire yeah. when we are so busy yeah. we couldn't possibly go on another day. Okay. So in our business, you're drowning. Most of these, like, but you've been drowning for six months, right, or eight months, right, right. Our businesses have ebbs and flows, right. The water's already in the lungs, and you don't know if. You're really, really busy right now, and yeah. you're like, you know, the Lord has provided us, and, and it's never going to stop raining. Yeah. And then nine months later, you're like, where did all the business go? What right. happened? Right. And you have all these people here, and you're like, oh, I ramped up to be this business that I'm not turning out to be. Right. And so it's mostly my comfort level. Yeah. But but I literally will wait like six or nine months of hmm. just insanity. And if it's proven season over season that it's still insane and it still yeah. looks insane ahead, then I yeah. go, okay, I'm comfortable to hire someone. Got it. But you know, a bunch of years ago, I switched my hiring practice from that model I just mentioned yeah. to we're going to be a million dollar business. So let's, you know, we were 650. Okay. We're going to be a million dollar business. So let's ramp up like a million dollar business. Okay. And we didn't hit a million dollars. We mm. had like 700. Mm -hmm. And then I think we hit like 920. Mm -hmm. And then we hit a million dollars. But for three years, I had ramped up to be the million dollar business that wasn't there. Right. And in those years, our profitability like dropped. Yeah, tanked. Yeah, tanked. Yeah, yeah. Tanked. He's got all these bodies. Yeah. yeah. Whereas before that, when we were flying off the handle, 
like the most money we ever made was when we were six hundred and forty thousand dollar company. Right? Most, there were like profit. Take profit. Home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There yeah, were like yeah. four or five of us in the business. We were yeah. we were working like crazy. Yeah. And I went, I'm ready to be the big company. I'm gonna become. I'm gonna hire the way the big companies do. Yeah. And that hurt us. That hurt us until like two years ago yeah. when we made big changes again and we started going like, forget this. We need to be flying off the handle. What do you, where do you, what's the, like, what's, what does scaling look like for you now? Are you good where you at? Do you want to? No. So where no, do you, we're wh- flying off the handle right now. Well, but where do you, like, <laughs> what's the future version? What are you trying to build? Did you know? You're still figuring you it out? You never have it figured out. What's that? You never have it figured out. Okay. So I, I know what I want to do for people. Yeah. And I know the value I want to drive for them. And I know the types of clients who are perfect clients mm-hmm. and what they should pay us. It's very hard to know if all those things are going to align when you're facing a project in front of you. Mm-hmm. And when you're halfway through and things aren't quite good or they're not going well. You know, like there was a week, two weeks right. ago where I was yelled at by three clients. Like I had to have really tough conversations with three clients. One of them, they were confused because we were so busy. They were confused by the way we were account managing. Mm. I had one conversation. Someone else on my team had another conversation. We contradicted one another. Mm-hmm. We didn't know that we had. Mm-hmm. She, and she was like, what is going on here? And mm-hmm. I'm like, yeah, that's, that's embarrassing. Yeah. We had to have an open conversation with her about like, I'm sorry. Yeah. You know, uh, another, I don't remember what the other one was. Another client called at us uh, and was not pleased with some things that were happening. Mm. Uh, last week, I got I got destroyed by a client <laughs> okay. because of one mistake, one outsourced developer made on one page of one site that mm. caused the entire e-commerce site to crash. Wow! And it was down for whatever eighteen minutes. Yeah. But you know, it was like we we weren't we weren't even charging the client for the work. Yeah. We're just managing it to be friendly. Yeah. And uh, and you know, like on a Friday, you know, even now, like I'm I'm like you, you feel like garbage yeah. because of this one little mistake from this one little thing. Yeah. And so when you have those days, you go like, this isn't fun. Why am I doing this? Right. But then I have conversations with people where I'm like, I'm like, Hey, I have the opportunity to change your life. Right. Right? Like your business is here and it's going to be here. And if I can enable you to get there, not only do I help you, but I help everyone that you help. Right. Right. And And you get to make videos like this, (laughs) inspire so many people. It's fun. Right. It's fun. But yeah, so no, I hear you. I hear you. But hear. but I mean, you know, but could you be? Do you see yourself being double the size, triple the size? Is that like, not like how you we, think? Like we we need six more people right now. Mm. But do you want to be like ten times the size? Um, I think we should. I don't I don't know if it's what I want or mm. or what we need or we we need to do. Okay. Right. You know, like like we're hovering around two million dollars, and and that's okay. Yeah. Um, and. It's a very different company if we're six or eight or ten million dollars. Mm-hmm. Very, very different company, mm-hmm. um, and and I don't have the the I'm not opposed building that company, but I just want to know. I'm more curious why I would want to build that, mm-hmm. right? So if I want to build that because it's like yeah, I really want that hundred person team, yeah, and I really want uh, the eight million dollars in revenue, like for like an eight million dollar company earns more or less the same profits that a $2 million company does when you're in marketing because you're going to go through these ebbs and flows. I mean, if you're really $8 million, $8 million, $8 million, really yeah. tight, really yeah. good, you're going to earn a lot of money. Yeah. But um, but we do okay. So it's got to be more about about the capabilities, about how well we do it for me. Yeah. Um, and and the, the amount we are able to impact a business. Right. That's all I care about. Well, when we make a how to get to $8 million marketing agency, we'll come back and do this all again. There we go. <laughs> no, it's cool. I'm, pumped, I'm pumped to see your growth. Okay, so like key takeaways: uh, if you want to build a million dollar business, you can't do it by yourself in this industry. You have to you have to bring on people. You hire your opposite. Don't hire the person who does what you do. Hire the exact opposite of stuff you hate. Start with freelancers, and then work your way to get full time. Uh, let go of the thing that you love the most last in your business. And ex- not even the thing you love, the thing that you're best at. Thing that you're best at. Right? Last I don't in the love business. copywriting. I just think I'm good at it. That's and then you. expect your first hire in each role that you hire for not to work out, a to little, suck. Yeah, it's unfortunate. And then and and you'll find your good person on the other side of the continuing to, to go through the hiring process. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. The last thing. Yeah. Is, I used to be paranoid about it. Don't be afraid for good people to leave you. Right. It used to motivate me to do all kinds of crazy things and I would live in fear and all this stuff. Mm. Good people come and good people leave. Mm-hmm. There are a lot of good people out there. Your company will survive anyway. Mm-hmm. Right? Don't be afraid for your company to shrink by 50%. Mm-hmm. 
Right? You have a, I, I have a friend, a mentor, who ran a 40-person agency that's down to 18 people, and they're doing the best work they've ever done. Mm. Right? It's not like like companies grow in agencies. Companies grow and they shrink, and they yep. go up and they go down. And you have good years and you have bad years, and and people come and people go, and and the company will go on. Yeah. Right. What you can do for people will go on. It's it, it took me like 11 years to figure that out, but I feel much more free now that I know it. Hopefully they learn it faster. Yeah. That's how we're hacking his brain. There you go. Speaking of that point, the next video, the last one in the series is on motivation, how to stay motivated as an entrepreneur. It's the 10 out of 10, the last video in the series. The link should be right there next to me. Click on it. We'll see you there.